Hi everyone, it's Tom Mackey. Now today I want to talk to you about the three P's of landscape photography. So what do I mean by the three P's? Well, for you UK viewers, give me a P please, Bob. You'll know what I mean. And no, not that sort of a P. Now, uh, let's get right down to the landscape photography P's. So the first P is planning. So today we have so much information at our hands. So when we're trying to plan a landscape shoot, we have Google Earth, uh, apps, you name it. Google Earth is indispensable. Um, I use it just to find out if there's access to the location, uh, use a 3D mode so I can see if the elevation of say a mountain might obstruct my view or, or, or whatever. There's just so much information with Google Earth that you can obtain. Now, there are a lot of apps at your disposal that help you do your planning for your landscape shoots. So I tend to use Dark Sky. I've mentioned this in some of my previous videos. It's great at giving you information like the um, possibility of rain, the percentage possibility, uh, the wind speed. So say if you're photographing something alongside of a lake and you want to make sure that you're going to get some really good reflections, just check the wind speed the night before and then that'll give you a good indication of what it's going to be like. Um, and the one I use all the time is the cloud cover. Now the cloud cover is really important in that if you're trying to get something with uh, say a sunset or a sunrise, you want to make sure you have some clouds. If you have very little clouds that morning then it's not going to be a good sunrise. Um, so cloud cover is really good but with everything you've got to take this with a pinch of salt because I've photographed in mountain areas in, in particular where on one side of the mountain it could be raining, the other side it could be sunny. So it might tell you you've got 100% uh, cloud cover on one side of the mountain, but actually you don't. So I've, you have to take this with a total pinch of salt, but it is very useful. Now other apps that I've used are Photopills and Photographer's Ephemeris. Both are very good. I particularly like Photographer's Ephemeris, namely because it's very intuitive, easy to use. For example, on um, Photopills, when you're trying to find a location to do some pre-planning, uh, you would think you would just go in and hit the Find button. Now that gives you some totally different information that uh, is not relevant to what you want to do. So it's not intuitive. And I had to Google how you find locations with this app. And people said, uh, this was up to like two, three years ago, they were complaining about this and the uh, developers said they would fix it. It's still the same. So the way I found that you find it is you go to load in the bottom of the menu. Load means nothing to me. So I wanna find a location. Anyway, so getting back to Photographer's Ephemeris, that has a find, it's quite easy to use. Uh, and then you can determine where the sun's going to rise and set and various other information. Also, uh, Tides With Me is a very good app for determining whether you've got a high tide or low tide wherever you are. But you have to use these in accordance to the closest location to the tidal station because it can vary, which I'll, I'll get to that later. So when you're on location, you need to plan according to the conditions that you have. So for example, when I'm on a workshop, I don't have a strict itinerary. I, I don't know what the weather's gonna be like at, at that particular location. So what I'll do is I'll choose locations according to the weather conditions I have. So for example, if it happens to be overcast or raining, you know, you can still photograph under those conditions. You know, there's no such thing as bad light, just the wrong light for the particular subject or location. So I would go into the woodlands, do waterfalls, details of nature, flowers, gardens, that sort of thing. It's not to say that you can't photograph those subjects under bright sunshine, because uh, in this example here uh, of the daffodils, I photographed in the rain. Uh, actually, I made the rain myself, but uh, I had some nice backlighting through the flowers. So you can get some really nice shots under those conditions. Waterfalls, as I mentioned, are really, I would say if, if I look back through my catalog of waterfalls, I would say 90% of them are photographed under overcast or rainy conditions because you need that soft light 
to bring out all the, um, the features of the waterfall and not burn out the highlights in the water. So next I want to plan for that extraordinary light before it begins to happen. So you kind of need to be an amateur meteorologist, understand the different types of clouds and what they mean. For example, cumulus clouds, that indicates fair weather coming. So I put this to the test on a uh, trip that I did to Tuscany with a group. Um, we were out photographing for the first couple of days and we had some extraordinary light. We had rainbows and on the third day it was overcast and we were out photographing villages where we needed soft light, that sort of thing. But on the way back to the hotel, one of the guys said, you know, Tom, do you think we'll have any rainbows today? And I just, I thought he was joking, but um, I said, well, you know, let's just pull over here. And we were passing the, um, the valley, Val uh, with the little chapel up on the hill that everybody photographs. I said, let's just pull in this layby and wait to see. Because I looked off to the west and I thought there's a little hint of some light there. So we were chatting for about a half an hour and I could see cumulus clouds forming in the west. I thought, right, guys, let's get set up. This looks good. So we have to be prepared for this. And eventually the sun came out. Uh, it was raining off in the valley and this is what we had. So we had this beautiful double rainbow. But it's, it's nice as a double rainbow shot, but the subject is very, very small. Here's the chapel. You can barely see it. So I zoomed in a little bit, and it's better. Uh, you can still make out the chapel with the double rainbow. But then what happened next, I had never seen before in nature. So the rainbow started to fracture, and beams of light were shining through this rainbow. And it was tracking across the top part of the landscape, heading for the chapel. And I was just hoping, I thought, please, hit the chapel and as soon as the light hit, I pressed the shutter and I knew I had had a shot that I was really happy with. And this is probably one of my favorite shots of all time. Okay, now at number two on our list is positioning. So what I mean by that is the position that you choose to put your camera in to create that composition. It's very important. And what we tend to do as photographers is we, we have our cameras on our tripods and we use that usable position of what we're used to, uh, the height of whatever your tripod is. But I like to take my camera off the tripod, walk around the subject, go low down to the ground, see if there's a different aspect that might be interesting from that position, or go really high that might separate some uh, lines out in the uh, composition. And what I mean by that is, um, if you look at any scene, you have lines within that scene. So if you take all the details out, you'll end up with your subject horizon line. If say, if you've got a mountain, you've got a mountain range, there's a line there. And any lines, strong lines like a path or something that's coming into the, uh, the composition and going out. So it depends on where you place those lines that creates a really strong composition. So once you have that best position for your camera, stick with it. Which brings me to the third P, persistence. Now, I tend to go back time and time again to locations to get, you get different images, the conditions might be different, but sometimes I have a particular image in mind that I want to capture, and I'm not satisfied until I get that. So I keep going back time and time again. Which brings me to a story of um, what happened on a recent workshop in Scotland. We were photographing at Loch Edev at sunset, and I always take groups there every year. It's a great location, but um, we, I've just got this image in mind, and I haven't been able to capture it. I mean, the first year we went, I'll show you what we had. We had a really nice sunset, but the tidal level wasn't correct. So there was just too much clutter here in the foreground. And I, what I was going after was the uh, really nice calm reflections, very, a lot of symmetry, a lot of color. Uh, so I went back the next year with a group and we managed to get this. So the level of the water was great, great reflections. I like the shafts of light coming through the, the clouds. 
But the clouds weren't the right clouds for me anyway, uh, for what I wanted to capture. So we went back this year and we lined up along the bank and we were chatting away. The, the level of the tide was great, very calm. One of the guys said, um, your bag's going to get wet in a minute. And I looked down and the water's coming up. And I thought, okay, I better put this on my back. And this is what happened. I mean, we started losing our ground. The water level was coming in. But we stuck with those positions because those were the best positions for our compositions. So, uh, I mean, as we were chatting, I thought, well, this is high tide. This is 403. It won't go any higher than this. Uh, no. It kept coming in and in. And before long, I had to abandon my hiking boots. And they are waterproof, but uh, only to a certain level. And, you know, we could have moved. But again, it's that position. Keep that position that suits your composition the best. And, but that was, uh, in the end, we did get some great shots. I'll show you. I was really pleased with this. Uh, the little shafts of light here coming on the mountain. The reflections were gorgeous, some nice color. But I was hoping that the clouds would break up a little bit and start to light up. And towards sunset, this is probably as good as it got. It's not quite the image that I wanted to go for, but you can be assured I'll go back again next year. So there you go. There are my three P's of landscape photography. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. It does help us out quite a bit. Hit those like buttons and make sure you enable that bell. Uh, you'll get alerts for when we post a new video. So until the next video, bye for now.